Lumino Neo is introducing AI masking that is detecting up to nine separate elements people, skies, architecture, transportation, water, flora, mountains, natural ground, and artificial ground. It is supposed to automatically mask the desired area with just one click. Let's have a look. I am not a power user. I've been using Luminar for one purpose only, that is sky replacement, something that Luminar is very good at. I have created some sky collections that have been sold with Luminar AI and Luminar Neo, and I have tested it in and out with my own medium format sky collection for both versions. Now you can check the Luminar sky replacement tutorial on my channel, link is down below. Uh, I am an affiliate, but you're not going to find any affiliate links for Luminar in the description. You will find a direct link and I recommend you have a look and try it out. Skylum is founded in Ukraine and most of their offices are based in Kyiv. Support them if you can, it's the right time to do it. You can also support this channel by liking the video and subscribing. I got my hands on the latest Luminar Neo 106 beta version. Things might be different for you uh, upon the official release. Actually, I hope they will be different for you. Don't get me wrong, Luminar Neo works. It's just a new feature I have some issues with. AI mask seems like a big thing, maybe even bigger than sky replacement itself. Uh, since I'm not a Luminar everyday user, you might be asking why am I even talking about this? And, uh, I got certified with Photoshop almost 15 years ago, so I've been around the block for a while. I'm not trying to compare these two, and from my perspective, Luminar has very interesting functions and solutions. Aside from the sky replacement, the, the wire removal is amazing for architecture. Yet, I can't see using it as a standalone solution in my work. However, I'm happy it's here. We need companies like Skylum to push the creative industry. I was wondering why is this released in uh, 106 version? That's a big feature, enough to make a jump to version 2, but that's how it is. I've been checking the AI mask tool with a fresh pair of eyes. I'm using MacBook Air M1. I've been told that Luminar for Mac is almost 5GB in size, as it holds both versions for Intel and Silicon. Let's start with this photograph from Iceland. Uh, it almost never happens for me to use built-in presets, but I have made an accidental discovery with this photo. One of the presets uh, under the uh, scenery collection has blew my mind. It's called Fast Fix. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I didn't see that potential in this image. I like this photo in a muted version, but this is just, uh, just amazing. Let's see for yourself. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. This is actually very inspiring and it makes me curious to revisit the entire series from that day. Uh, it might be another reason uh, for you to subscribe to the channel if that's something you would like to see. Select edit and with this update you will see a masking section in every tool on the right. Let's open up develop and click on masking. So a few options here, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient and AI mask. There's a cool animation once we activate it. Looks like there's something deep going on. We have some uh, selections uh, created for us here. Sky, flora, water, mountains, natural ground, and man-made ground. So in order to activate them, you just have to click. And it does a pretty good job. Uh, some things are uh, mixed together so they will cover two regions. Uh, I know this uh, tool is able to um, detect humans in the pictures but obviously it doesn't work in this case. Let's select the mountains. Now obviously a water is selected as part of the mountains and we would like to refine this and the only possibility that I see to do it is using a brush. So we have to go back to masking tools and select the brush. In order to remove that uh, water part from the selection, we have to erase that part of the mask. So I'm selecting my uh, brush tool uh, with erase option. Now, 
it's slightly too big. No, I don't see that mask, it's gone. Uh, but it will appear once you start to paint over it. So, okay, that's something that we can live with. And this is a landscape photo, so we can get away with a uh, soft brush. But there's lack of any precise tools, or at least, maybe not at least, because it, it's maybe more complicated than it sounds, but I think this brush should have some kind of edge detection. Okay, some of it is in the sky as well. Okay, let's say we want to make some adjustments to our selection. We go back to the exposure and maybe I want to make it more dramatic. Lower the exposure, add some smart contrast to it. That's a little bit too much. I think the, the quick fix was uh, really good, but this is just for the sake of uh, presentation. Once I go back to masking, if I select the water now, Again, I would have to adjust the selection because it's uh, not very precise. But the thing is, if I go back to mountains, my adjustments are gone. I will have to erase that again. Of course, you can go to the Edit tab and you can try to find it here. Okay, let's try with this next image. That's a real estate photograph. I would like to change the exposure on man-made ground. So I have to refine the, the selection over here so let me go to the brush and I'm going to use a soft brush and lower the strength to uh, 50% and just slightly refine this selection and lower my exposure we can find uh, the edit in here if we would like to edit that further uh, later on Let's say I want to add some adjustments to the architecture. Let me go back to the masking and choose architecture. Okay, so here uh, we can change the selection. I'm very happy to see that uh, Illuminar finally has this possibility to use a brush in a straight line. So we can uh, click and shift click on the other end and this will allow you to create a straight line brush, which is very important for this refinement process. That is quite uh, limited in Luminar. Uh, I'm not sure if they did it with, uh, with this version. Uh, maybe they did that before and I just wasn't aware of it, but I know it wasn't there for, uh, for a while. So let me choose brush and in this case it's a straight line. We have a building, so I'm going to use a hard brush. Just change the size of it and click on one end and shift click, just remove that part. And in here, we can add a soft brush, lower the strength, maybe enlarge it a little bit. So it's very difficult to make a precise selection uh, in this area. In my next uh, example, some architecture shot with, uh, with a human. human selection, I would say pretty decent. And then sky selection, that's again uh, pretty cool that we can now refine this ourselves with a straight line because uh, it's very difficult to make a brush line like this using a mouse. Even with a tablet it might be difficult. Uh, so the architecture. Okay so we also apparently have some water in here. Now, it would be nice if I could maybe drop this selection on top of another selection, just so I can let the AI masking know uh, what is what, because this will follow in every other panel in here when you go to AI mask. I'm sure this will be updated and it will perform as advertised. I think there is no way around it and a set of refinement tools has to be developed. I'm looking forward to these changes. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.